great way to start the new season is to understand how rotation, a stabbing extension of the lead arm, and the snap of the wrist against one another, axe style, can really help you overcome the uh, early season flaws, early season blaws. So we're going to sit down today, explain this out in good detail, and hopefully it helps you start the season. Miles Lee, when he was Ryan Harvey, top power hitter in the game. And these athletes all have different and distinct styles, but the mechanics are the same. Jeremy Yates, one of the top lefties in the game, perennial uh, all-pro player. Andrew Collins, who started out as a camper at softball magazine spring training, became a two-time World Series MVP, one of the most powerful hitters in the game and best all-around players. And finally, my son, Brett, whose simplicity is something that's easier for the right guys to understand. Number one is rotation. And rotation is a dominant force. Watch how the body rotates. Head doesn't move, doesn't drift ahead. If you drift ahead, you lunge. And the rotation is a dominant force. As you pull your hands back to connect, you want to uh, coil or wind as you reach ahead and then you get an unwind. Point of contact is right out ahead, boom, on most pitches right to where you'd be bearing an accent to a tree. You're trying to rotate, drive and snap and bury the bat head into the ball. After that, it's all follow through. Look at how the foot's ahead of the hip, and the rear front hip is ahead of the front shoulder. Keeps you in a good aspect so you're rotating against a bracelet without lunging ahead. Just a different view from the back, watching the rotation. The rotation just absolutely dominates it, and we use the overheads. I'm going to try to get more overheads as the season goes on because uh, the rotation is not seen nearly as dramatically from a side angle as this overhead. Next one we talk about is extension, and watch how extension is done in two stages. The arm comes off the chest as we rotate, and then the lead tricep straightens out and extends. That's a very dynamic motion and very important to get the hand off the chest. If you look from the side, you think extension looks linear. That's why videotape can be very misleading. Point A to point B. Looks like we're driving straight ahead towards the ball. That would make, or to where the ball is coming from, that would make the swing very linear and very um, very much lungy. We'd chase outside the rotation. But when you look overhead, watch how it dynamically changes the image in the viewpoint. The hands go in an arc, and they actually they start out in an arc, and then as you extend and snap, um, the hands go outside the arc, flatten it out a little bit, but they never fully go outside the arc. Watch how the rotation dominates the hand path. There's your extension, and then the hands tightly follow the rotation coming around. That's the point to understand on it, and that's what's going to give you your success. Most hitters do not rotate, stab, uh, or extend and snap within the rotation. They watch the video from the side of like Collins and they end up just chasing ahead with the arm. So if you can understand that, you'll be well on your way to improving your swing. Yep, video sure can be deceiving on, on uh, things like that. Harvey demonstrates a great rotation. Yates, again, great rotation. Watch how the rotation dominates all four of these swings. And you can see that that's got to be a main focus and we've got to wind and unwind and feel that rotation, pull the hands around, and then drive and snap. One thing is watch Harvey's hand. The hand path is what you manipulate. It always goes down to the point of contact. And Brett's got a level swing, more level than the path of the pitch. We don't want to match our swing plane to the pitch path. We want to be more level. That gives us a cutting path, a good cutting swing, more of a, uh, a driving, snapping swing. Watch Yates' lead arm, his, his lead hand. It's almost like he's trying to karate chop to the ball. The knob on the lead hand has to go in rotation at the bottom of the ball. And watch the top arm extension during the snap on the uh, swing of um, Andrew Collins. There's a strong rotation, but we drive the top arm, extend, and snap with them. See the wrist work sideways? That's how number three of the X snap works. Swing simulator is great. We saw these on our website. Over and over, you can rotate, drive, and snap. Uh, this athlete does a really great job of demonstrating the rotation, drive, and snap. Look at it comes around, and watch how the knuckles stay facing, them, just like hitting an accent to a tree. And watch how the back continues to drift within the rotation. Just a phenomenal way of bringing the bat head to impact. Watch the back of Yates' right hand, where the knob is. It goes right to the plane of where the ball is going to be, the point of contact. And just that rotation dominates it. The hands uh, come after the rotation. Rotation leads... And there's a lot of shoulder torque. Here's a rotation in the lag. There's a snap. Roll over afterwards. We get the full extension. Want to keep the lead arm straight and continue to rotate around. 
and then watch what happens. Let it come out of your top hand, and we finish all the way around the big arc. The faster we are at the end of the swing, the faster will be an impact. If we, if we make it abbreviated, it will be slower at impact. Uh, the, watch the H here again, that rotation. The rotation is so strong. And watch how the hands and the snap follow the rotation. Again, with bread here. Rotation leads and tons and tons of shoulder torque. Shoulder torque is just as important as um, regular torque. So here's our first athlete, Bob. And Bob, really a good Division One player, but he started to swing down uh, in this session I had. He had a lot of power, but he's swinging down and, and making more of a cleaving contact because of two things. Watch what he's doing compared to Yates. Yates's lead arm and the, the back of the lead hand is being pulled in an arc. Watch how Bob's dives down, and then all he can do is roll over to try to make impact with the ball. So he's got a lack of rotation and a lack of the lead arm guiding properly, and then he's rolling over. Watch the lead wrist roll down. The bat head will come up to try to make impact with the ball. Rotation's not bad, but the rotation needs to be stronger, and the lead hand has to stay palm down and has to go underneath to the plane where the point of impact is. Um, again, you can see where Bob's rotation starts to slow, and then the hand comes way out of the plane of the bottom of the ball. Right there, look at how that lead hand guides to the point of contact to the bottom half of the ball, and the rotation brings it around. Here's a ball where you can see that He's rolling over. Watch the lead wrist turn down. He rolls over. If the hands go down and don't follow on the proper plane from the start, then all I can do is roll over so that the bad head rises up. We want an axe snap, not a roll over. So those two things, if Bob can get those figured back out and get more like he so look at how that rotation leading and how late the hands and the snap come. If he can get that figured out, more rotation, and keep that lead arm, his left arm, aimed at the bottom half of the ball without rolling over, he'll immediately get back uh, 50 feet of power and get back to where he was before. One of the early season slumps we see on some of these athletes I worked with when I was up in the villages, some of my buddies. Again, watch the hands go down and all the back can do is flip up over the top, roll up over the top, and then the swing plan finishes down. Here's what it should look like right here. You got a pitcher there, you go rotation and X snap. So my next buddy here, watch what he does. And um, Ed rotates okay, but then he stops rotating and he just pushes the hand straight ahead and he doesn't get much of a snap. When you rotate and bring that knob to the inside fall on the rotation, that enhances the snap. Look at here. Everything's pushing straight forward. No snap. Even though he hits some nice line drives doing it, he's crossing a lot of power. Watch how the left wrist and the left hand follow the arc. And that actually... Pulls away from home plate, brings the bat head closer than the snap of the wrist real, and the extension of the tap arm really bring it out. But look at there, no snap. It just dies. So to work on the snap, but more so work on the rotation as well, those two. Rotation and snap. You want to feel that uh, lead arm being pulled around in the arc, your upper body rotating, pulling around in the arc, and then snap. Um, losing a you know, tremendous amount of consistency and power there. Uh, again, these guys have been off for a month and some of the flaws that you developed during this period of time. I flip Brett's swing, but look at here, rotate and snap. See, the rotation continues to pull that around and you're snapping within the rotation. Now, here, here's a picture of the rotations better, but again, watch the hands. They start to drive forward and then they dive down. It's because they dive down because you're out of forward momentum and there's no rotation pulling that around in the arc. Watch Harvey's left arm being pulled around in an arc. Keeps you on the proper plane, keeps you, keeps you going properly. Look at this again. Lead hand follows the rotation, it enhances the snap. If you just go straight forward, if you're early or late, that's going straight forward here. If you're early or late, there's no rotation to keep making that follow that same good path around the body. So rotation, stab extension, and snap. But snap and extend within the rotation. The rotation's got to be more powerful for both of those athletes. Again, watch the hands go forward. Push, they start to push forward. They're no longer being rotated. And then they can just dive straight down because that rotation is losing all the power of the hips and of the shoulders. And uh, you're just using your wrists and your hands, which are small muscles in comparison. See how Collins brings that around. So certainly need to work on that. Again, the rotation, look how that dominates. 
and that's what both of those athletes really need to do and to get that left hand for Ed and the or the right hand for Ed and the left hand for Bob guided around. Now here, in Mark's case, Mark's been a very high level player his whole career. And what I think he needs to do is because he's late on the snap and the hands want to follow the rotation. He's got a great rotation, but the hands want to follow the rotation around too far. He's snapping too late. From, lag, from the start of the rotation to snap is a 30th of a second. So I think with Mark, you've got to snap strong and quick. Try to snap at the same time you start your rotation and then you'll get a more flat plane and you'll catch up in time. It takes a while for the snap to catch up to the strong muscles of the rotation so even though you have a sequencer I think that you're just starting maybe your snap too late and not aggressive enough and then try to swing more level than the path of the ball either you're snapping through if you snap too strong that would have been a good swing so sometimes when the knob comes up and the bad head drops it's a matter of just trying to make sure you snap really aggressively from the very start now watch for the ball let the ball drop into a zone between your chest and your waist understand that your hand pass is going to travel down on that and then right here you should be stamping right there and anyhow uh, sometimes you're um, early on the ball and if, if, uh, if you don't snap from the start it lets you drag and rotate around so a certain degree before you go before you snap watch Blackburn's He's aiming right at the bottom half of the ball. He's got a flatter plane on where he does his rotation drive and snap. Same with B.J. Falk. You can see where he's driving his hands is where the ball is going to be. Not the path of the pitch coming down, but where the ball is going to be. So just something as simple as that is going to allow you to uh, improve. Taking a good dry practice cut on a pitch is going to be you know, up around your chest level. And then when you go ahead and swing, make it the same way. Make it more level than the make the swing plane more level than the path of the pitch coming down. The drills again are the seated uh, perfect snap drills. Hit the ball off the tee. Rotate, stab, and snap off the tee. All one motion. That's a great drill just so you can pick ball after ball after ball. Start with your hips open on these and the swing simulator is absolutely awesome. And then it comes down to just mental focus. See, when I was hitting good um, I had focused mostly on the rotation. I didn't really feel the stab and snap as much because I'd worked on that a lot. But for me, the rotation what failed and we all have our own sticking points on it. So you have to work on balancing rotation, stab and snap. And it's going to pay off for you in the long run. And it's a great way to start the new season by working on those and drilling them and getting yourself where you can be a productive hitter.